Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship and thank you very much for joining us. If you are worshiping with us for the first time here in person or out there through social media, we extend a special welcome to you. May this hour of worship be a blessing for us all. We start our worship with confession and forgiveness on page 94 of our Red Hymn book. For that, please rise as you are able. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most, most merciful God, we confess that we are in captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Here is the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing our closing hymn. Please be seated. And it, it is our opening. What did I say? I know there will be some of you who would be happy to go home early. <laughs> but it's the opening hymn. Hymn 778.
to page 203 for our uh, uh, setting here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of our Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. First lesson is from the chapter of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I command them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? 
Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven and all this land that I have promised. I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Here ends the first reading. We will read Psalm 51 responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and thick from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you and only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have known deep within me. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body of God Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my wickedness. And renew the The second lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. The saying is sure are wor and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me as the foremost Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience making me an example of those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the second reading. Please rise for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord, I will read in your hearing. Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, These fellow welcome sinners and eat with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you having hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, 
For I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. May the Lord add his blessing to what has been read and to what will be said. Please be seated. Ole really hated Lena's cat. One day when Lena was visiting the neighboring lady, he took the cat, threw it in the Volvo, and drove a few blocks away and threw the cat out the door. When he got home, the cat was already there. Ole put the cat back in the Volvo and took it a few miles across the city and tossed it out of the car again. Upon returning home, he was astonished to see that the cat had beat him home again. Determined at this point, Ole took the cat and drove him across the city over the river, through the woods and clear across three counties before putting the cat outside and uh, drove off. Several hours later, Lena was back home when the phone rang. It was Ollie. Is the cat uh, there? He asked. Yes, she replied. Well, put him on the phone. I am lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, our message for today is about lost and found. You know, the scripture tells us how Jesus came into the world to find those who are lost and bring them home. God sent his son into the world to save not just some of us, but all of us. Because each and every one of us are precious in his sight. And he don't want any one of us to perish. The Pharisees had a wrong view of God. As far as they were concerned, the sinners don't deserve God's love. That was why they used to criticize Jesus for keeping company with those they consider sinners. In our gospel reading for today, when they saw him eating and socializing with such people, they whispered, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eat with them. What is wrong with him? In reply, Jesus told them these three parables. The parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And about his own mission to make it clear to them the attitude of God toward those they were considering sinners. The first parable was uh, the first parable is about a shepherd who had hundred sheep. And when the shepherd later found out that one of uh, the sheep was missing, he didn't say, I shouldn't be bothered with the one that got away. After all, I do have 99 of them. And they are more than enough for me. Oh, no, he didn't say that. What uh, he said and did was, he left the 99 in a safe place and went to look for the one that was lost. Because the good shepherd loved all his sheep. Jesus said, when the shepherd finally found his lost sheep, he rejoiced. 
And then he gently picked it up, put it on his shoulder, and headed home to celebrate his finding. Jesus went on and uh, told another parable, a parable of a woman who had ten silver coins and who lost one of them. When she found out that one of her coins is gone, she too didn't say, oh well, I still have nine of them. And that's okay. No, that is not uh, what she said or what she did. What she did was she swept the dust floor, she lighted up the candle, and she looked for it until she finally found it. Then she invited her neighbors and friends to come and celebrate with her her finding. The third parable that Jesus told is not mentioned in our gospel reading for today. It is about the lost son, or the prodigal son, and many of us are familiar with the story. Jesus said there was a father who had two sons, and one day the youngest one came and said, Father, I want to go and see the world and explore life while I am still young. So give me part of the inheritance that belonged to me. Well, the father divided his wealth between two of his sons and gave half of the wealth to him. He took the money and immediately left for the shiny city. Maybe like a city like Las Vegas. And he spent all that money foolishly. Later, life became very hard for him. He couldn't find a decent job, and he became poor, hungry, and homeless. We don't know how long he lived that way. Then, Finally, he said to himself, in my father's house there are plenty to eat, but I am dying of hunger here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go home and uh, I'm going to ask my father for forgiveness, whether he welcome me or not. And then he headed home, not knowing what to expect. Finally, when he came close to home, yet when he was still far off, his father saw him from a distance, and he ran toward him with great joy, and gave him a big hug, and he rejoiced with his coming, and he gave a great celebration for his homecoming. Now let me ask you this question. Have you ever wondered why Jesus told these three parables rather than just telling one of them? Wasn't the parable of the lost sheep enough to make the point of his purpose? Why he came into the world? To save those who are lost? Or just the parable of the lost coin? or the lost son? So what was the significance of telling these three parables? I believe that these three parables gives us explanation to the, to the three different ways in which humanity got lost and found. The parable of uh, the lost sheep remind us how we can't find our way without the help of the shepherd. Here is how. You see, sheep knows when it gets lost. It cries and it runs around and makes a noise. 
crying out, bah, bah. But uh, it can't find it his way back to the, uh, to the fold. It can't find it his way back home. And some people are like that. They know that they are lost, but they don't know how to get back on the right track. And Jesus came to look for them and take them back home where they belong to. What about the coin? Well, the coin doesn't know that it is lost and doesn't know that it is found either because it is not a living being. And some people are like that. They don't know that they are lost. They don't know that they are found because they are spiritually dead. And Jesus came to find them and rejoice in their redemption, whether they are aware of it or not. Again, what about the lost son? Well, the son knew that he was lost. He also knew how to get home. Even though He wasn't aware of it, whether he was welcomed or not. And some people are like that. They know they are lost. They also know how to find their way back, even though they feel uncertain whether they would be welcome or not. And the good news is that Jesus came to tell them that God rejoices in their homecoming. Remember, what was lost was one son out of two, one coin out of ten, and one sheep out of hundred. When you put it in percentage, what is lost is that 50% out of 100, 10% out of 100, and 1% out of 100. The significance of this is the parable of the lost son remind us how our God never satisfied with the salvation of half of humanity. The parable of the lost coin reminds us how God will, won't satisfy even with 90% of humanity being saved. And the parable of the lost sheep reminds us how God never satisfied even with the salvation of 99% of uh, humanity. So these three parables give us a glimpse to God's heart, helping us to know how God doesn't want any one of us to perish. And that is why he sent his son Jesus to redeem all by dying for all. You know there was a time when I used to preach saying God loves each and every one of us. And that is why he sent his son in order to give us the opportunity to confess our sin and accept him as our personal savior. But if we don't listen to him and come to him, come to him for salvation, God is not the one who loses. We are the one who perish. But that is not uh, what today's gospel story teaches. What we learn here is how our creator doesn't want any one of us to perish. You see, like a, a parent who brings children into this world. God is the one who brought us into existence. And we are his precious children. Let's say that there is a parent who have uh, ten children. And one of them suddenly dies. 
because of illness or because of tragedy. Would there be a mother or a father who would say, oh well, I still have nine of them and they are more than enough for me. And then in such a way, comfort himself or herself? No, that is not the natural reaction of a good parent. For a loving parent, each child holds a special place in their heart. And when one of them is not there, they leave empty place in their heart, which makes their life incomplete. Maybe this story I'm about to tell you would explain better what I'm trying to say. It is a story about a Sunday school teacher who told her students to take a scissor and cut a piece from a big poster that was covered. It was a poster of uh, Jesus. Take your piece home, but don't pick, she said, and bring back next Sunday. The following Sunday, when the student returned and uh, began to assemble those pieces, to their surprise, they found that it has a big hole in the middle. One little girl forgot her piece. The teacher hugged the tearful girl who forgot her piece and said to her, Amy, please don't cry. I am glad that you forgot your piece at home because it teaches us a better lesson than I anticipated. It teaches us how important each of us are in God's plan of salvation. And if we are not all there, how it leaves a vacant place in a God's big heart. Oh, how true that is, my friends. That is why the Lord won't rest until he gathers all his children into his kingdom. Dear friends in Christ, it is easy to get lost in this big and complex world like Ole did. The prophet Isaiah says, we all are like sheep going astray. We all went our way and we got lost. But the good news is that our loving God is not just our creator, but also our redeemer who go to any extent to redeem his children. Therefore, my dear friends, if there comes a time in your life when you feel kind of lost or insignificant, always remember that in the eyes of your creator how you are special and precious. No matter what others say about you or about how you feel. No matter what you are going through, you are precious in the sight of God. And don't forget that. Because he had paid a great price to make you his own. And you belong to him for once and for all. For now and forever. And nothing will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Please, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that. God doesn't care when we don't live according to his will, when we turn our back on him, when we live in sin, in sin. Our God does care and grieve, just like uh, any parent who grieves when their children rebel and live a reckless life. When that happens, we often pay for our sin and our wrongdoing, just like the prodigal son did. We don't get away easily. In one way or another, we pay for our sin. We come to harvest what we sow. But the Bible says in many places, especially 
in the book of Psalms. It reminds us how God's anger is for a while, but how his mercy endures forever. Therefore, when we fail to live up to his expectation and live a difficult life because of our fault, our sin, because of our sin, our God is not a God who would say, you made your bed, sleep on it. No, our God is merciful, compassionate God who would go to any extent to redeem his children. And that is a kind of loving and merciful God we are worshiping. Oh, thanks be to God for his unfailing, unfailing forgiveness and for his everlasting love. Amen. Now we will sing our sermon hymn, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Him 502. <laughs> Creed is found on page 105. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us look in your uh, insert for the prayers of intercession. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Your people receive mercy, and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love, and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation groans as it suffers the impact of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvest that all may share. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost and lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with any addiction and illness. Provide for those in any need and all those we think in our, about in our hearts and minds. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints have, who have died now rest in your peace, presence. Uh, give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all of our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As far as announcements are concerned, uh, if you look in your, your bulletin, uh, you will see that Rally Day is kicking off on September 14th, uh, this Wednesday, and you'll see all the uh, things that are going on there. Uh, so please check that uh, calendar and, and please uh, attend those things. Um, there is a confirmation uh, meeting, um, and that will also be on Wednesday night, right? Yes, right after worship. Right after the worship there. For orientation with the parents as well. Yeah, for parents and students who are, who are in uh, con uh, commun confirmation, and it, that is kind of an orientation program. Uh, the Handel Choir will meet on Wednesday, September 14th at 7 p.m. And uh, they are looking for more people, so if you would like to come and see, you're not committed, but they, they are needing some other bell ringers. And you'll see that there is an insert in your bulletin on Honey Sunday.
In September, our church will partner with Dakota Boys Girl Ranch and sponsor a honey Sunday drive. Uh, during the month, 11 ounce bottles of honey may be ordered for $10 each and proceeds will be split between Breckenridge Lutheran and the ranch. Uh, order blanks are uh, on a display near the uh, church office and orders are submitted to the ranch. Bottles will be mailed directly to customers within a few weeks. And uh, again, you see that this is here. Uh, there is a table out there for sign up as well. So uh, please consider that. Um, the Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch does a wonderful job of helping people who are in need. Um, I guess you see the other announcements that are, that are given there. Um, again, uh, next Sunday, if you are being confirmed this October, there is a meeting for confirmants and their mentors, September 18th, and that includes right the parents. After right after worship, and that's the parents too. Um, and the radio broadcast today is sponsored by Pam and Bill Braun and Cheryl Lee in memory of Joan Burton. And we, so we thank Pam, Bill, and Cheryl for their support of our uh, radio ministry. I believe those are all the announcements, unless someone else has something that should be brought up. Uh, let us continue with our sending hymn, uh, number 543. Thank you. again for joining us today for worship. We hope to see you next Sunday as we gather again for worship. As you heard, we do have, uh, we are starting our Wednesday evening uh, service uh, and we do have supper and worship and fellowship and uh, if you have time, please come and worship with us as well. Now, I invite you to rise for the benediction. As you go on your way, may God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit watch over your going out and your coming in, now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Yes.